So just a quick video because Bill Shorten, Bill Shorten of the Australian government of this administrating power that occupied and entered our lands. Bill Shorten, liar that came up in letters relating to Quinton Bryce, remember? These are con men that are career criminals, not career politicians. They go outside of the rules in the country in relation to electing politicians. We're not supposed to have career politicians. And these people have been politicians all their lives. Now, look at the disgusting statements that Bill Shorten has made here and, and we'll discuss a few things I know about Bill Shorten. There is a network of hard right man baby Nazis, you know, just people who just want to cause trouble, these man babies, they want to complain about the vaccination and it's just, it, they, they deserve to get the full force of everything that's coming their way. So he's talking about a jibby jabby and Nazis and man babies and the CFMEU and the criminal actions that's going on in relation to land titles. Land titles. Your land titles. Your Commonwealth being administered and run by banks that allow people like the CFMEU to do what they do with your land titles from inside closed doors with criminal thugs. And Bill Shorten and his little criminal gang aren't happy with it. Bill Shorten, what about HSU, Michael Lawler, Kathy Jackson, and the massive ripoff in that union, let alone this one? And then let's address something, Bill. Remember this? Remember when I met you in the parliament and you slipped up and called the working class the poor? Let's have a look at Pauline separating the middle class from the working class. Why, why are they two different classes, Pauline? You promised us a pay rise! You promised you would rein in public spending and bring down inflation. Ah, the RBA! You promised you wouldn't touch our super or our tax cuts. Ah, the middle class! Ugh. You told us our power bills would be 275 bucks cheaper, but now they're more expensive than ever. Why haven't you fixed the NDIS? Or built the 1.2 million homes you promised? No, oh, taxpayers, get away from me. You promised to end coal and gas. Ah, the Greens. <laughs> ah, good. I'll be safe here in my panic room. Now let's have a look at the international law that Bill Shorten is obligated to uphold while standing there abusing you for not following through with a crime that he was committing. You know, just people who just want to cause trouble, these man babies, they want to complain about the vaccination, and it's just, it, they, they deserve to get the full force of everything that's coming their way. A crime that he was committing, along with everyone else in the Australian government because they aren't in line of authority to your constitution. They aren't in line of authority to your constitution. Bill Shorten serves foreign interests in your land and it's very demonstrative by that bus driver pissing himself laughing, Bill. So I was in the parliament and I had my camera and I saw Bill walking towards a whole bunch of school children so I decided to follow and listen in. And Bill sat down to talk to all of your children. And he said, oh, I hope that the, uh, the, 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 the poor, oh, I mean the working class, can all be able to afford a home. He called you the poor. Now, I'd like to find that bus driver that cackled like a witch after Bill Shorten was caught out calling your children to Paul. And here we have Pauline Hansen very clearly separating the middle class from the working class. The silver owners 
from the RBA debt slaves. Bill Shorten has admitted here that he is operating for and on behalf of people that poisoned you all. And he's calling you Nazis. You know, just people who just want to cause trouble, these man babies, they want to complain about the vaccination. And it's just, it, they, they deserve to get the full force of everything that's coming their way. Let's go back to a Nuremberg and define what a Nazi is, Bill. Hmm. Go and read Rule 92 of the International Humanitarian Law, Bill. And everyone should question you over your connections to Quinton Price. And everyone should question you over the actions that you have committed inside your office for the last God knows how long, Bill Shorten. Do you think the people have had enough of career politicians running their country into the ground on behalf of foreign interests that chose to poison everybody in a war crime? Bill, a war crime. So here we have Bill Shorten trying to uphold his side of a crime while you all sit on your hands not knowing that it's a crime. The office of Bill Shorten, MP, Minister for the NDIS and Minister for Government Services. We receive a large number of calls daily and accordingly it might take us a moment to answer your call. Our staff are friendly and helpful and look forward to engaging with you respectfully. They are entitled to a respectful workplace and abusive and inappropriate language will not be tolerated and threats may be escalated to the authorities. Please hold, we look forward to assisting you. There is a network of hard right man baby Nazis, you know. Our staff are friendly and helpful and look forward to engaging with you respectfully. These man babies, they want to complain about the vaccination and it's just, it, they, they deserve to get the full force of everything that's coming their way. They are entitled to a respectful workplace and abusive and inappropriate language will not be tolerated. All these man babies, they want to complain about the vaccination. Man baby Nazis, you know, just people who... Man baby Nazis, you know, just people who... Man baby Nazis, you know, just people who... So, we hear these comments. And now we look at the full force of the law, Bill. It, they, they deserve to get the full force of everything that's coming mm. their way. And now we look at the full force of the law, Bill. Your comments are very stark in defining who you stand under, what position you take. And it's not the position of the law, is it now, Bill? So let's have a look through the law quickly. 268.25, war crime, torture. A person, the perpetrator, commits an offence if the perpetrator inflicts severe physical or mental pain or suffering upon one or more persons and... The perpetrator inflicts the pain or suffering for the purpose of punishment, intimidation or coercion or a reason based on discrimination of any kind. The person or persons are protected under one or more of the Geneva Conventions. That's you, Bill. You're a minister working for the parliament under some sort of oath. The perpetrator knows of or is reckless as to the factual circumstances well, you're in cahoots with the upper echelons of that uh, society, having been married to a previous Governor General's daughter, Bill Shorten. So you know of, directly, the perpetrator's conduct takes place in the context of, and we've just got you in a video calling everyone Nazis. So w would that constitute an offence, Bill Shorten? War crime, inhumane treatment. A person, the perpetrator, commits an offence if the perpetrator inflicts severe uh, physical or mental pain. They're all Nazis, aren't they, Bill? Or suffering upon more than one person. 
the persons are protected under the Geneva Conventions. So I think you're obligated to those Hagen Geneva Conventions, Bill, and the perpetrator knows of or is reckless to the factual circumstances. Again, you're married to a previous Governor General's daughter, Bill Shorten, so you know of very directly. The perpetrator's conduct takes place in the context of. You are treating people inhumanely by calling them Nazis while pushing a upon them. War crime. Biological experiment. A person, the perpetrator, commits an offence if the perpetrator subjects more than one person to a particular biological experiment. 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 What we call that under emergency procedures, right? An experiment. The experiment seriously endangers the physical or mental health or integrity of the person or persons. The perpetrator's conduct is neither justified by the medical, dental or hospital treatment of the person or persons, lockdowns, lockdowns, mandates, mandates, or persons, nor carried out in the interest or interests of the person or persons, mandates, lockdowns, jobs, losing your employment. That's not in the interest of anybody. A person or persons are protected under one or more of the Geneva Conventions. And as we've discussed, you already know, and your conduct in your audio and your demonstrated actions could prove that you're complicit in a biological experiment just by your very own words. Willfully causing great suffering. The person, the perpetrator, commits an offence if the perpetrator causes great physical or mental pain or suffering to or serious injury to body or health of one or more persons. Excess deaths, excess deaths, excess deaths, Bill Shorten. The person or persons are protected under one or more of the Geneva Conventions. And you know of, and the conduct took place in the context of your audio that you published on TV. And this is a very, very, very stark revelation, revelation, Bill. This next one's interesting, Bill, because that criminal magistrate, David Helpen, sent me to a jail for recording in a courtroom without actually finalising a trial. So th this one's very interesting, considering that the New South Wales Magistrates Court did this to me. A and then those UN inspectors that came to visit those facilities where you tried to poison me inside those facilities, let let's go on to the next one because that's pretty serious offence too, Bill, and it's not going away anymore. It's actually coming for you. Denying a fair trial. The person, criminal magistrate David Helpen, committed an offence when he deprived me of a fair and regular trial by de denying me any of the judicial guarantees referred to in paragraph B. The judicial guarantees are those defined in Articles 84, 99 and 105 of the 3rd Geneva Conventions and Articles 66 and 71 of the 4th Geneva Convention. The persons and persons are protected under one or more of the Geneva Conventions and under Protocol 1 of the Geneva Conventions and the perpetrator knows of, well, he's a magistrate and he was totally reckless in the way that he did his trial. And to the factual circumstances, well, he ignored the facts and pushed his ideology on the court instead of dealing with evidences that were put before the court in a full and concise manner that established that the person or persons are so protected and the perpetrator's conduct takes place in the context of and is associated with an international armed conflict. Well, you are a militarised occupying power under a foreign oath, a foreign crown and a foreign entity that is not in lineage of your ANZAC, making you an occupying and administrating power in the Commonwealth of Australia and therefore obligated to the Hague Conventions. Shall we ring DFAT and ask them, Bill? This then leads to unlawful confinement. The perpetrator unlawfully jailed me and continued to confine me to a certain location called Cessnock Jail, where the United Nations inspectors tried to go and 
investigate New South Wales facilities for the very actions that you did to me after I entered that jail. The person or persons are protected and the perpetrator knows of and the conduct takes place in the context of. And this is the reality that I put on the courtroom record before David Helpham to watch all this sovereign citizen ideology come out of the New South Wales police force and the state protection squad, including that cretin down at uh, fixated persons, Matthew Reason, criminal police officer of the New South Wales police force who committed acts against international law as well. There is a network of hard right man baby Nazis, you know, just people who just want to cause trouble. These man babies, they want to complain about the vaccination and it's just it, they, they deserve to get the full force of everything that's coming their way. So I don't want to go on for too long in this video, but you can see very clearly that the people inside this Australian government, not the parliament, the government, right? We're talking about the governor general, the prime minister's office and the executive branches found in the federal executive council. This is where the head got replaced and Gough Whitlam got removed from office, remember? Someone kicked Gough Whitlam out and installed their own executive branch power. And that executive branch power is a foreign interest, a foreign power. Therefore, putting the Hague Conventions into the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. They're obligated to the Hague Conventions because they're ad administrating power under Article 55 Hague 4 War on land. And this puts them in a situation where they are in an international conflict as administrators of your country committing international war crimes from their office of administration. And this is becoming very, very clear now. And I, I'd like to advise all of you that we aren't going away. We grew to the point where we established the facts on the table and no one has been able to rebut them. And Anne Toomey is deleting comments. Rob Sudi is constantly trying to argue with you, pushing all of this legislation on you, all of this statutory requirements that aren't actually common law, common law of a state. The estate, the executor of the house is recognised in the Supreme Court as the middle class. And as Pauline pointed out, you're not the middle class. You're the working class. And as Bill Shorten commented while in the parliament, the working class are technically the poor, the poor per, the one that owns nothing. And that's the fault of career politicians like Bill Shorten, who are in cahoots with governor generals that have careers going back in politics as far back as 1987. That's 40 years running your country into the ground. That's 40 years bringing a house to a million dollars instead of a hundred thousand. That's a long time of them going into the demise of your financial position as a country in the international stage. This is why you're in the position you're all in today because of men like Bill Shorten, criminals who have careers of over 40 years in politics, in cahoots with the upper echelons of the Governor General's office, where the dark side, the ones that da jailed McBride, the ones that did the Brereton report to excuse the command from any sort of responsibility for their actions in Afghanistan and elsewhere. This is a very evident problem that we all face as a people. And chasing the fine and the rates and all the stupid low-rung stuff is not you addressing these criminals running the Federal Executive Council 
and managing your country like a corporation. So, we can see pretty serious subject matter to touch on that nobody wants to address. Probably because it puts them in a really culpable position. Now, when you look at David McBride, you've got to look at George Pell on the opposite side of the fence. This man was a known pedophile, was actually charged and found guilty of those offences and sent to jail. And some sort of dark side command freed him and allowed him to leave the country and go and be the banker for the Pope. And on the flip side, someone that came out and spoke about the dark side in your government, creating international war crimes across an international stage, got thrown into jail and treated like the enemy. Now, when you walk into a magistrate's court and they don't even give you an ability to speak up and defend yourself, and your only ability is to defend against some legislation that they've pushed on you, and say you're not guilty or guilty some sort of legislation without that judge, that prosecutor, that lawyer, acknowledging a line of authority in which they're supposed to act, to hold a line of authority, to hold rule of law in the first place, then it's not fair justice, is it? And that's a war crime in itself. If that courtroom refuses to recognise all of the laws and your standing that you put on the table and instead treats you like that pauper that needs to be guardianed because they've taken the middle class away from you. This is very demonstrative of the last few years of your country. A house is now a million dollars. Food is now twice as much. Fuel went to excessive fees over the lockdowns. They locked you down. They mandated you. They took you out of your jobs for refusing to follow their bidding. That's a war crime. They're under Hague conventions. DFAT have to operate under the Hague because it's trade. That's a debt. All of these things link together to make Bill Shorten obligated to all of these rules, making him a war criminal merely by his position stated in a 15-second video. You're all Nazis, but he's the one that broke the Nuremberg. You're all Nazis, but he's the one that uses the police like Nazis. You're all Nazis because that's what those people accuse you of so that you're on the back foot accusing them of it. When they're the ones that have acted it all out and you've done nothing but tanty in response to it. Tanty in response to it. And that's because you don't know what they are doing to you. You just don't know. So the only response you can give is tantying. Well, that can change now, because Bill Shorten, we've thrown the law out on the table now. Your administrative power in an administrative parliament where the federal police are obligated to that criminal code, where you're obligated to that criminal code and you've now been accused of breaking that criminal code and the Australian Federal Police are obligated to follow up on those accusations given that they're real. Given that they're real. You said words, your government did actions, you acted. Now under the criminal code, an attempt is equal to you fulfilling the act of a crime. So even if you say, oh, it didn't happen, you attempted to do it, making you equally guilty as if you had done it. The whole entire country can see what you did. They just can't equate it to you being a criminal. So end of the video for today. I, I want to do a video on this uh, 
Olympic thing, but our little Olympic champion has been erased from the internet because she was used, abused, slandered, thrown around, treated like a little child, and now we all have to forget about it. It didn't happen. What, what do they call it when a Mandela effect? So next year, you'll be talking about the Olympics and some people will be like, no, it didn't happen. There's no record of it. It didn't happen. Mandela effect. There's a very good example of how they Mandela you. Now, there's a Disney Mandela effect going around at the moment about some star guy, blah, blah. I'm going to point something else to you, out, out to you. The current Disney has never used old Disney's logos. So when you ask current Disney to say, have you used this type of logo? They, they will go, no. Their corporation and their rights management doesn't have a right to use what was old, so they created something that was new. And when you asked them, they said, no, we've never used that one because it's true. I want you to think about just that at the end of this video, because these people lie to you constantly, erase what they've said, and then you're on the back foot. And here we have Bill quite openly being caught out, calling you all Nazis, when you're the sons of your Anzac that went to war against that stuff. Well, I hope that you've been having the time of your life. Just remember, you gotta always think twice.